What's up guys, Joey here. So I like sharing fixes when I find software and hardware issues with my own setups and sharing them with everyone else. Uh, if you follow my channel, you'd know that with my 6700 XT, I had a high VRAM clock issue that I fixed uh, using CRU and blanking time, which I, I'll explain it, but long story short, I got a 7900 XTX and I've read about the driver issues. I've read about the high VRAM idle clock issues, especially with high refresh and dual monitors. Um, for dual monitors, I can't really go over the specifics, but it's roughly the same um, methodology. You just got to apply it to both monitors. So you got to run the CRU tool and figure out based on your cable and figure out what maximum blanking time you can put. So long story short, uh, what my, my rough explanation to give you on how to fix this is that for a high refresh monitor, there's a setting called blanking time, which basically increases bandwidth and the problem with that is that if the blanking time is too high the monitor won't work with certain cables at certain refresh rates so if i just give you this rough explanation here i'll go into like a page i got open um and it gives you you can see all the cable standards so for example if a monitor supports hdmi and display port so display port 1.4 is pretty common now um let's just say 1.4 is higher than 1.3 so if a monitor has 165 hertz support, or wait, how would I explain this? Um, if a monitor can support 165 hertz, uh, megahertz refresh rate, but it also supports three different cable types or two different cable types, based on whatever the cable type is, they'll have a pixel clock limit. Um, and what blanking time is, is lowering the blanking time means that there's more bandwidth or it lowers the bandwidth requirement for a certain refresh rate. So for in order to run like 144 hertz on HDMI and 144 hertz on DisplayPort, the blanking time has to be lower. This is for compatibility. So that's where AMD, everyone's blaming AMD. This is not really an AMD issue. It's not really an NVIDIA issue. It is a bandwidth cable compatibility issue that can be solved user end, but it's not really obvious. Like, you know, people don't. They don't really make it clear how to fix this, and then everyone is blaming the drivers. Uh, it's not a driver level thing that can necessarily fix the problem. So, long story short, let's just say you're on DisplayPort. This is a common, you know, high refresh issue that most people are having. Now, a 1.3 HBR3, which is high bitrate 3, which is supported on the, the previous version of DisplayPort, I think we're up to 2.0 now, um, supports up to on 8 BPC, depending on what kind of monitor you're running. I don't know about the 10 BPC limits. But BPC is like color depth. So if I go into my Radeon software, I can go into gaming. They moved it, display, and I can bring up my BPC color depth. So my color depth is 8 BPC. If I enable HDR, I can get 10 BPC working. Um, but I, I like 8 because it works with high refresh. And then there's like issues with the refresh. and B Anyway, um, so in other words, all I need to know is the max pixel clock supported for 8 BPC on my 165 hertz 3440 by 1440 monitor now um well you don't even really need to know the max you just need to know what your cable can support and that'll give you a, a baseline to go off so if i was on a displayport 1.3 cable my max pixel clock or my, my max um speed here you can see is 1080 megahertz on hbr3 like on the maximum like as much as it can support okay so all I need to do then is open a tool called CRU Custom Resolution Utility and see what my 165 hertz setting uh, pixel clock is. And as you can see here now, the desktop I'm at 165 hertz. If I go into performance tuning just to show you live, um, I'm stuck at this. I'm stuck at 2487 megahertz, which is almost maxed out, and 105 watts just at the desktop. Like I'm recording with Relive, which does affect it a bit. But if I just sat here not doing anything with the monitor, just talking into the mic. This normally, if the blanking time is not too low, would um, clock down and allow the VRAM to down clock, even recording with real life. So there is definitely an issue, and it's causing high power consumption. So what I do is we'll open CRU. So I've downloaded this program. I'll link it in the comments up down below. And you run CRU, and you can see here it'll bring up like um, active monitors, and you want your active one. You might have more than one. And you want the ones that are active if you're using multi-monitor. But basically, you want to go in and find your high refresh setting, which is usually under extension blocks under one of these, and just look for it, like double click, 
and it'll come up with detailed resolutions here and I can double click that and it'll show me where my 165 hertz setting is. Now open that, double click, and it can it shows me that the blanking is set on vertical, ignore the pixel side, um, to 41, which is extremely low. That's why I'm not getting any downclocking. And what blanking is, is when it's too low, it does not give the VRAM windows to downclock. That's the rough explanation. When it's higher, the VRAM can behave normally. And the, the main side effect though is when you increase this number, you also increase the pixel clock requirement for the higher blanking time. Like you're filling blanks, which takes up data is the best way I can explain it. You're kind of like extending the clocks um, to allow for down clocking, but it's going to take more bandwidth. And so that's where the cable compatibility is. The reason this monitor has 41 is likely so it can be compatible with older versions of DisplayPort cable and still maintain higher, um, higher, you know, refresh rates. Okay, so that's my matter. Um, it's more about the pixel clock and utilizing whatever your cables support. So if you're running a HDMI cable, for some reason your DisplayPort cable broke, you're limited to 600 megahertz, and that may also limit what kind of refresh rates you can activate. But if you're not getting any downclocking because the blanking times messed up on that 600 megahertz limit, you could still benefit from modifying it. So long story short, my cable is at least up to this standard, up to 1.3. It's a 1.4 cable. You can bring up the details by usually in your monitor OSD. Uh, open your OSD and look for the setting where um, HDR and adaptive sync are. And that's usually under other. Um, it depends on your monitor brand. But if I go to other in mine, it tells me my DP version, which is DP 1.4. And it also tells me my window source is, you know, DP 1, uh, 3440 by 1440 at, at 165 hertz. But you can't see that on my recording because it's it's on the OSD, which won't show up in real life. So anyway, long story short, I open this. I can see that my pixel clock is down at 886. So the bandwidth is, is requirement is less. That's a compatibility thing. And if I increase this blanking time to allow the down clocking, I have to stay. Um, I actually think it might be higher on DisplayPort 1.4 because it's not listed here. But I, I'll just use this as an example. I'll stay under 1080 megahertz, which should give me headroom as well because I'm on 8 BPC. And I basically want to look for a number as high as possible to allow the down clocking while staying under 1000 megahertz for 165 hertz ultra wide 3440 by 440. Okay, and it automatically changes all the other parameters for you, as you can see here. So if I change this blanking time to 200, my pixel clock stays under 1000, and nothing else is really an issue. Does it? Yeah, that should work, uh, just based on my own, my previous uh, testing of this kind of thing. So I'm setting it to 200, and right now I'm just going to show you again, we're stuck at 103 watts, 2487. And I'll click OK, OK, this is how you activate it, OK, and OK. And then in the folder, it's got reset. That's to reset everything to defaults. Don't run that. Um, and then restart and restart 64. 64 bit OS is what you should be running. Um, but you can run either of these. And it'll restart my recording. So I have to, I'll just clip this. And your monitor will flicker black as the graphics driver restarts, because that's what it does. And that basically lets the GPU read the monitor's new data that you've just changed, the blanking time. And so now my blanking time's at 200. And if it fails, like for example, if you set a monitor that your cable can't handle, uh, a blanking time your cable can't handle, or something like your cable might actually not be the spec you think it is, uh, then you'll just get a longer flicker, and then it'll just reset to default by itself anyway. That's usually the worst case scenario. Um, and then you go into CRU and double check your active profile has that change still active. Um, and you can also just check your down clocking to be working. So mine was under here, um, sorry, display ID 1.3. And under detailed resolutions, 165 hertz, uh, you can see here my blanking time has changed from 41 to 200. And now, even though I'm recording with Relive, which does use the VRAM a little bit, we should see a different clock speed when I look in Radeon software. So I'll just open that up. And now you can see we're actually under 100 watts. And if I don't do anything, like I'll just sit here for a bit. Because moving the mouse, even moving the mouse can um, affect the down clock. Because it makes the monitor more active. But yeah, we're, we're getting about this. Now, I did take a screenshot for you guys as well, just to show you actually the, the full benefit 
Um, I put it in my ready and reload for this video actually. This is what it does now. So this is my same desktop you can see here. It's, it's in a picture. Um, I go down to 25 megahertz on the VRAM with five watts of power. If I that's with Brave, Brave open, exactly everything open, just not recording with Relive. And that's the, the power consumption I'm getting now. And it also lowered my hotspot temperatures uh, down from, I think they were around 50-ish on the, on the not fixed. So right now with Relive, we're getting 44. And so that fix brings it down a few degrees. So anyway, um, that's, how you, that's roughly how you fix it. Um, and you know, Results will vary. Your cable quality might be poor. It might be a 1.4 cable, but it's some cheap Chinese brand and it just will fail if you, so just be aware of that. If, if you push higher pixel clock to the limit of your cable, you could cause earlier cable failure if you've got a subpar cable. I've had display port cables fail on me and I've always used this fix, but a good quality cable should still last a good long time as long as you're not pushing the limit too high. But you know, as you can see, I'm on a 1.4 cable. I only had to set it to 200 for my specific resolution and refresh rate. So if you've got similar, you could try 200 if you're on down at 40. And I've noticed under 70 is like a common thing uh, with these higher end monitors and their default blanking times. So yeah, and yeah, I'll link that in the comments below and I hope that helps you out. So that should solve the, the issue. Thanks for watching, bye.